Hi everyone, Hanshi Steve Kaufman here. This is Hanshi's World. Tonight we're going to talk with Master David Teitler, who has been heavily involved with Tai Chi, yoga, and Qigong for many, many years. He's going to tell us about his arts. We're also going to talk a little bit about the past that we know each other. We know each other for over 50 years, David? 50 years is right. 50, where's it go? <laughs> it went away. It went, it went away, right? We've got to find it. We're going to refine it. We're going to, we're going to talk about some of the things we've been involved with over the years. Um, as a matter of fact, we were talking before we started recording about my first dojo, which was in Howard Beach, and this is in 1961. And I had mentioned to you, I had recently found the uh, slides, about 15 to 20 slides, Slides are the way we used to take pictures for those of you who uh, take pictures with your little camera, with your little telephones now. I know, I know, I make fun of a lot of things, but uh, that's okay because we're coming from a long history of where we're at. Um, and we're going to talk about some of the history that we've shared together. Uh, as I mentioned, we, I've known David, and David's known me over 50 years. Going back to my first dojo, which was in Howard Beach, I think that was in what they called a recreation center at that particular point. It was downstairs in one of the buildings. In the basement. In the ba <laughs> yeah, one in the basement. And uh, we started uh, trying to figure out what this was all about. And I had recently found a collection of slides, 35 millimeter slides, that I'm going to have processed, and we're gonna uh, put them up online so you'll get a chance to see what I look like. <laughs> <laughs> what David looked like over 50 years ago. I look the well, same. <laughs> he looks the same. That's it. <laughs> okay. Now, he still has hair. All right. So the thing is, we're going to talk about the things we've been involved with. Uh, karate, uh, primarily, is what we shared together. David went into, like, Tai Chi, yoga, and Qigong. And David will talk about that as we go. But David, let, let me just open it up. What, what, is, what is actually, in your view, what is karate about? Well, karate is the art of developing your character. Many people think that karate is about fighting. It's not about fighting. It's about the training that goes into the act of fighting. If you can't train yourself properly, you'll never really develop good character if you're into something like karate. Karate stands for empty hand, empty hand fighting. And it was brought over to Okinawa, uh, from Okinawa to Japan by a man named Ginshin Funakoshi. The thing that makes uh, karate stand out is the ability to focus your energy. Focus is called kaim in Japanese. So if you're able to focus your energy at a specific point in a contest or when you're training alone, that's calm. Calm consists of con contracting all the muscles in your body at one time. So if you throw a punch, you contract all the muscles in your body. Now, you must learn how to throw the punch correctly. You have to learn how to kick correctly. You have to learn how to block correctly. This takes many, many years. Then what starts to develop is the idea that you don't have to memorize the kata form. You don't have to memorize the punching and blocking. But when the time comes for you to really memorize it, you can focus on the part of your body, which is the place for your intuitive judgment. That's the hara down here in the lower abdominal region. And the universe will work you. What do I mean by that? I mean that if you're going to block and punch and your mind is calm, that block and punch will come out of you. In other words, you will be blocked and punched by the universe, and that will move out into your opponent. And essentially, if I can jump in over here, essentially what you're saying is for our audience is that, and we have a lot of martial arts people watching the show, I do believe that a great many of them really don't understand the aesthetic aspect of the cosmos in relation to your psyche, your psychology, your mentality, your soul, and your spirit. When you're saying you're blocking and punching, it is really 
the universe that's expressing these actions through you. Am I correct in that yeah, that's, assumption? That's exactly right. Good, good, good. So therefore, like if you're practicing a specific set of moves against a specific possibility of an attack, the same mentality that goes into that will automatically work for you and function for you in, in another situation that may not be exactly and specifically what you're practicing. If you've been able to calm the fluctuations of your mind, if you've been able to practice your technique thousands and thousands of times, the time will come when the kata does you. It's like my Tai Chi teacher used to say, you don't do the form. The form, the form does form you. The form does you. That's correct. So karate is about having a hard time <clears throat> training and training and training and training until you come to such a point that you're able to relax your body. Don't forget that focus, that climb only happens at the point of contact. Your whole body has to be relaxed. So in Tai Chi, your body's relaxed and you throw a relaxed punch. In karate, your body's relaxed and you throw a contracted punch. That's the way you get power from Tai Chi. That's the way you get power from karate. Uh, the same applies to any of the particular techniques that you'd be working on. Your punches, your kicks, your stances, your shifting, your movements. You flow as if it's water. Everything just flows naturally if you don't get in its way. It's really like a long dance. Tai Chi, like karate, is really a long, ritualistic dance to be done in perfect manner. Mm -hmm. Mind calm, body relaxed, breath elongated and long. And if you can get yourself into that posture, you'll be into a meditative posture. And to, for you to move into a moving meditation is one of the abilities that you want to try and develop in any of these internal martial arts. It certainly is illuminating your, your very simple and clear explanation of karate, uh, tai chi. How did, you, how did you, I guess the word is gravitate, from the martial world into the yogic world? Now that's a very interesting transition and I'm sure our audience would like to know that. A lot of them are practicing martial arts a segment of them are practicing yoga, but in your particular very interesting transition, you went from karate, which is hard, tai chi, which is soft, and yoga, which is... Soft. That's also soft. Soft and straight. Okay. So what happened was that I was uh, practicing karate and teaching it for quite a number of years. And little by little, I began to not be sure of the connection that I was searching for. And I felt as though my time in karate had basically been really well spent. Actually, one more little note. It took me two years of stable, steady practice to be able to stand my ground when somebody came in to punch me or kick me and return the counterattack. So it took me two years to just stand my ground and not move. And I got hit plenty of times. After that, after that two year stint, is when I started to gravitate towards a more spiritual outlook in life. Uh -huh. And when I first saw my first uh, Tai Chi class, I knew that it was for me. I didn't know why it was for me. I didn't know what it was for me. Hey, this is my next step in evolution. But I, my own I knew I really wanted to yeah. do it. And that's when I started doing Tai Chi. And I kept doing yoga, I kept doing karate, and it overlapped into my Tai Chi. And then finally, after a long period of time, when I realized that karate was about development of character, and Tai Chi was more into a state of moving meditation, looking for different states of consciousness to arise that I was able to stop doing karate and full-time do Tai Chi. Then, <laughs> many, <laughs> many, many moons after then, that, yeah, right? many, many moons after my Tai Chi introduction, I decided to get into yoga. How did I get into yoga? I was looking for an even more spiritual connection. 
And yoga is that process of calming the fluctuations of your mind so that certain things will be more available to you than they are now. Like you might not realize it, but you're a radio. <laughs> Did you know that? Yeah. <laughs> you are you're, a radio. You're generating stuff out, right? You're a radio and you, you have five stations. Five and you've stations. And you've been living with these five stations all your life. What are the stations? <laughs> as, well, as Not the you, senses, right? As you develop, yeah. you realize that there are more than five stations. There are ten stations. Aha. Uh -huh. Are you talking about chakras? No. Okay. Just ten radio stations beaming out all kinds of interesting information. And you were only getting the first five. Now you're getting a full ten. So your state of consciousness evolves totally. You understand more about what you're doing than you used to be able to understand. And your mind is calm, your body is relaxed, the way a human being should be. How do you become attuned to this higher consciousness, aside from just pure meditation, which in my view is a mode of thinking, a mode of thinking about not thinking, a mode of not thinking about thinking or back and forth until you play with all the words in every way you find that you can do that until you come to terms and say, hey, you know what? Thinking has nothing to do with this. You want to get to the point at which you realize that there's a place in your body that is the doorway into your soul, into your intuitive judgment. There's a place in your body that you can reach if you practice that will lead you inside and once you start to go inside then you start to develop more as a human being now what do i mean develop more as a human being okay what 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 i'm picking up here is that there is no specific need or reason to become mystical okay. any 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 of these dogmas for example that you're involved in can essentially deter you from ascending to a higher level of consciousness. A consciousness, in my view, is, as you say, total involvement with what it is you're doing, body, mind, and soul, to the point, for example, where I'm playing my music or I'm working with my sword doing Iaido, I step outside. I look at the person that is Kaufman doing the exercises, I listen to the person that is Kaufman playing the music, knowing that all of these actions are happening through me by my devotion to the causation that creates this particular art form. I can understand why people might be intimidated by this venture that you seek to ascend to a higher level of perfection in your own body and mind. Let me ask you something. How important is it that you must function on these particular physical attributes, such as like the prana, the hara? How important is it to focus on that rather than accepting a higher state of being without having to succumb to all of the, well, I'm gonna use the word intellectual aspects of what it is that you're doing? Why is it necessary to depend on what you conceive of as an, as an aspect of your being rather than just accepting it in perfection and wholeness and completion right here, right now, without getting into that idea of instant karma, which you have got to like train yourself to get to anyway, but that's another story. So how would, how would you approach that? How would you answer that if somebody like asked you that question? Different strokes for different, for different folks. Different folks, absolutely. <laughs> David. People wanting to get in touch with you and perhaps join your classes can contact you by going to your website, which is realyoga.org, www. We're getting away from that. As a matter of fact, most people know it's just realyoga.org and email you with any questions they may have and you would respond to them, right? Yeah, I respond to all okay. my emails. Info, I-N-F-O, info at realyoga.org. Ladies and gentlemen, David Teitler, one of the leading exponents of the internal arts. Mm -hmm.